Hello buddy, it's Wyvern here with a video to discuss the Total War Warhammer 2 beta patch. And uh, this was announced recently by CA. You can uh, hop on and join the uh, beta by changing your uh, the version you are on. Uh, personally, I will not be doing so because as most of what I do is multiplayer oriented. Um, then uh, and the multi multiplayer community usually stays on the uh, live server. I'm probably not going to be moving over to the beta. That said, some of the fixes here definitely good from a general sort of campaign standpoint. Um, we're seeing some bug fixes to Rite of Awakening. We're seeing the bug fixes to the Bright Wizard in the Red Moon Inn. Now he's going to have all of his spells. Uh, should be a she, I guess. It's supposed to be Sienna. Come on, shouldn't be a male Bright Wizard, but what can you do? Um, so a few changes to the Empire Authority system, generally just fit bug fixes. So those are all good and nice. Uh, that said, there are a few multiplayer fixes, and I hate to say it, but I'm actually kind of disappointed. Now, first and foremost, the Dread Saurian. And this was a unit where it was clear, I think, that it needed some changes and needed some fixes. Uh, so we can see here that CA has tweaked its attack animations to help melee targeting. This, in my opinion, is a good fix. The unit is a currently very janky and very buggy when it comes to um, its combat. Oftentimes, and I'm, I'm sure some of you have seen some of the matches, for example, on Turn's stream, uh, for example, where the shredder, the shredder will just stay stun-locked, essentially, for 15, 30 seconds, whatever, doing absolutely nothing because it's unable to decide who to attack and it's getting attacked from so different, so many different quadrants. Uh, so if the player isn't, like... M massively microing it to force it to attack it gets distracted and doesn't attack anything uh, so hopefully that's a fix that's and i think that's a good choice plus 3000 mass in my opinion is also a good improvement because the unit did tend to get a bit bogged down uh, i keep in mind it only has 60 speed so where a lot of and the animations are not necessarily the best for sort of bypassing enemy uh troops which, in my opinion, is a bit of an issue. It's it's less of a problem on a cheaper monster where you're not investing so much into it. But when a, your big, massive monster that you can only really bring that you can only well, you can only bring one of, but you probably can only afford one monster really, uh, is getting snagged on trash spears or whatever and isn't able to push through, then uh, I think the extra mass can definitely help. So I don't. I think these first two fixes are definitely good. The rest of it, well, I, I should say fifty building damage. That's whatever. Right? Like it's. Good enough. I like who cares. Dread Saurians should should be good at destroying everything. Uh, plus 0.5 ex acceleration once again could help it break through. But this, in my opinion, is a mistake. Plus thousand hit points on Ultra. This translates to 750 hit points on Large. Is in my opinion completely unnecessary. Certainly unnecessary given the fact that the Dread Saurian is getting all these quality of life life fixes which will quite possibly make it a much more competitive unit. Right now, a big chunk of the problem with the Dread Saurian is the fact that it's an unreliable unit that freaks out and doesn't obey commands well, often gets snared in situations where it should not, by all rights, get snared, that sort of thing. But with all these things probably fixed, I, I can't say they will be fixed, but it would be good, in my opinion, to wait and see how, what impact these buffs have before jumping on to the... Uh, course of action of adding HP to the Dread Saurian. The Dread Saurian already has 10,000 HP. Adding another 750 on that is obscene. Keep in mind this is a unit that does have 15% missile resist. It does have a 100 armor. It is not as flimsy as, say, a mammoth. Even a war mammoth only has 70 armor alongside that 1,100 HP, or 11,000, sorry, HP. So if only 70 armor, no missile resist on the mammoth. It's a much more vulnerable unit to enemy missile pressure. Uh, forget other 10,000 or 9 to 10,000 HP units like Giants, like the Helped Abomination. All of these units are far more vulnerable to missile pressure than the Dread Saurian is. Now, we can certainly argue, yes, the Dread Saurian is a more expensive unit than any of these. Barely more so than the War Mammoth, to be quite honest. But um, this additional HP is going to make it not too much it's not really going to help the unit against factions that can always shut it down hard with mass ap fire but it's just going to make it much more obscene for factions that don't have good tools to kill dread saurians to take them on for factions like bretonia that only has well hippogriffs its lords and archers with sort of janky armor debuffs to deal with a unit like the dread saurian this is making it much more difficult to deal with. It's it's screwing them over. It's screwing over factions like Vampire Counts who already struggle against Lizardmen blobs. Um, 
So in the few matchups where the Dread Sergeant is already potentially oppressive, this just makes it more so, and it isn't going to help it, in my opinion, against factions like, that already demolish it. A faction like Dwarves is going to destroy you no matter how much HP you have, unless it got buffed to, like, I don't know, 20,000 HP. A faction like Dwarves will delete you in seconds. They don't give a damn. We've got Thunders and troll hammers, and they're going to mess you up. So I, I think this is a huge mistake. 750 HP on large is going to be, in my opinion, a big problem. Second of all, cost decrease. Uh, now this one, once again, why didn't see why isn't CA waiting to see what the impact of these quality of life changes is before dropping prices? Now Shredder of Lustre, I can see it's a 3,800 gold unit. It's very expensive. It's very pricey. Very difficult to field. Uh, I can. And it is arguably overpriced. I, I definitely think minus 100 gold is probably fair there, even if it's fixed. On the base Dread Saurian, I don't think this is deserving of minus 10,000 cost. Or, sorry, not minus... Holy hell, I'm thinking of HP mine. But minus 100 cost. Not minus 10,000. I'm, I'm being stupid. But I think minus 100 cost is completely undeserved. Um, the unit is already devastating. To units like cavalry, uh, it's already a very potent. Potent, honestly, it's actually not bad against infantry, uh, barring of course anti-large uh, AP. Uh, it's fairly tanky against non-AP missiles. Um, it's fairly tanky in general because there's over ten thousand HP. The Dread Sarian does not need a hundred to be a hundred cheaper if, unless, sort of all these fixes are applied, and suddenly we're seeing that it's still performing horrible. But I don't think it really performs horribly right now. It does okay. Uh, so I think these are already mistakes right here um, being made. The, the Dread Saurian doesn't need price cuts. I don't think it needs more HP. Certainly not before seeing what the fix's uh, impact is. Um, and given that we are getting another DLC before Christmas, it's not like... And actually, the next Ever Chosen has been announced. So given the fact that it's likely the next DLC is coming relatively hot in the heels of this one... It's not like we're going to be waiting that long to get, you know, slight improvements to the Dread Saurian to make it a little more viable if CA had decided to just make these quality of life fixes. So I'm really dis sort of displeased and uh, worried about this. I really don't like this. Uh, Krokar getting on Grimlock gets minus 0.4 second melee attack interval. I think that's good. Krokar is definitely a bit underperforming um, and making him a little more uh, damagey, I think, could help him. He is supposed to be the um, sort of solo sniper uh as opposed to the old bloods uh support more support oriented play style so i i do like the fact that he's gonna be more potent as a combatant um he actually is getting another buff down here hand of the gods um which is uh having reduced calibration area which i do believe should be a buff unless i'm reading this wrong it should mean the calibration area is smaller so it should be a more precise projectile now from then on out, we do have Razor Dons. These are all gaining, well, these are gaining largely a buff. Uh, they're going to be shooting faster. They're going to have more range. They're going to have better calibration distance. Or um, The only real drop here is the reduced muzzle velocity, which I don't think should be too much of a problem. In general, I think Razor Dons should be a little more competitive. I'm not sure it's going to be enough to make them good, but uh, I, I definitely think it's an improvement. And Akai the Wanderer going down by 100 cost, I think is fine. I haven't really seen much of Nakai since the patch dropped. Uh, he He's not that popular, in my opinion. Um, and while I can't necessarily say if he's overpriced or underpriced, I've never felt he's overpriced. I also haven't felt he's popular or a great pick. So um, I think a minus 100 cost is decent. Uh, going on to the Empire. And this was kind of to be expected that Empire was going to get some changes. Marcus Wolf, probably the sole overpowered unit dropped in this patch. Uh, and he's getting some major nerves. But before we get to those, let's look at War Wagons. Minus 50 cost. I'm going to be... I, this kind of ticks me off. Because this is a trash change. War Wagons are garbage. They cost 950 gold. Their overall damage output is only two-thirds at range. is only two-thirds of what a squad of Outriders does for 200 less. Or 250 less. Um, they have non-existent burst damage. They're... Melee stats are garbage. They're not actually able to fight their way out of a wet paper bag. So the fact that they're a pseudo cherry doesn't really matter. Yes, they are tankier than Outriders in armor, but at the same time they have less HP and they're being much slower is a much more significant downside than um, is a than than uh, 
than lacking armor. You With 84 speed on Outriders, you can outrun most things except Skirmish Cav. With the War Wagon's 50 speed, you get right and run down by anything. Like, even infantry can often catch you and beat the crap out of you. So the War Wagon's just god-awful. And C8 cuts its cost by 50. This unit isn't worth more than 600 in its current state. It needs major overhauls. In my opinion, 50 more ammo, uh, because keep in mind, uh, while it sounds obscene to get 50 more ammo, every shot it fires, every outrider who shoots on a war wagon um, count takes up a shot of ammo. So with 200 rounds of ammo, uh, you've essentially got 18. It, keep in mind that it's being divided across six out outriders six outrider models uh, and you only have 18 outrider models essentially within the entire unit so the overall damage output is much lower than it is um for a unit like outriders outriders have 900 shots whereas a war wagon only has 600 so i think getting a plus 50 to bump it up to 750 damage would be much more fair on top of that boost its speed give it 60 mobility it doesn't have i think the mortar as well as the black lines should stay slower they're lugging around an artillery piece they're not supposed to be super mobile in my opinion uh just sort of more mobile than an artillery piece but uh the war wagon in my opinion give it more speed give it a bonus versus infantry make it a true hybrid chariot shooting unit make it something more like more like a tier knock chariot essentially a slow but tankier tier knock chariot rather than what it is now which is a piece of crap um and quite frankly there's no situation right now that a war wagon would be worth 900 gold um that it would be worth more than, more than an Outrider. It is a 600 gold unit. And um, yeah, the bit minus 50 cost is a total joke. Uh, War Wagon with Mortar going down by 100 cost. Now this I think is fair. The War Wagon with the Mortar is a uh, honestly a decent unit. I've already used it a bit in Quick Match. I actually feel that it is justifiable sometimes. It's not a terrible unit. Uh, the low ammo count hurts a little bit. And obviously it still suffers from the same issues of the War Wagons of being kind of trash in melee. But because the range damage output is actually decent, uh, as a mortar, and it does counter units that Empire usually wants countered, lots of squishy mobs, I think it's a pretty good, good choice. And I think 100 gold is actually a good improvement. Now after that, Black Lions plus 100 cost, I think this is a terrible way to go about things. Now in their current state, Black Lions are definitely worth a lot more than 1800, but I think simply increasing their cost is not going to fix that. I think CA needs to look at their raw damage output. Now, Black Lines, within 10 seconds of setting up, dump almost 6,000 damage. At 965 damage a model, you are looking at almost, you're looking at almost um, 30,000, 3,000. You're looking at like 19 or 2,900 damage per volley. So f about 5,800 within two volleys, which is what you get in 10 seconds because your first volley is almost free. That is a disgusting amount of damage output. Against larger units such as cavalry or infantry or something like a Dread Saurian, it is brutal. It devastates them in seconds. Um, it is a very, very powerful unit. However, against uh, single entities, is not always necessarily the best. I know people say it's super accurate, but I did some testing of just having a Stegodon or a Carnosaur beeline against a, the Black Lions, and they actually didn't get super impressive damage numbers given that it is an 1800 gold uh, shooting unit. Uh, there are definitely better artillery and infantry units in my opinion to take on single entity monsters. However, I, I, that insane 6000 damage in my opinion does need changing um, and I think they should have reduced the rate of fire by a little bit. Um, make it so that it's 800 damage uh, per model. Um, it still gives you a very high and very respectable amount of damage output. It would be a 20% cut to damage. Um, and I think it would make the unit much more manageable. It would mean that the unit cannot just burn something down as quickly as it does now. Uh, right now, black lines will just burn whatever you want to the ground in seconds. And it's really rather brutal how much damage they can do. So, uh, yeah, I, th I think this is just the wrong way of going about it. Now, Marcus Wolfhart is getting some major change, and this is really the, everything else here is Marcus Wolfhart. Um, obviously, I mentioned the Hand of the Gods already, but uh, Marcus Wolfhart, of course, dropped, and he was kind of busted. Uh, he's losing seven melee defense. Now, one thing I will say is I'm not sure that if this is actually fair. I think this, these nerfs might be a little overkill. Um, I kind of wish CA took it a little bit slower with nerfs, because this is a huge amount of loss uh, in performance. Um, his melee defense is going down by seven. Um, he's losing uh, about 18% of his damage output 
18% AP, 17% base projectile. Uh, so about 17.5. Well, no, it, it would probably be more towards 18% because he's, he's majority AP. So I think that's fair, all in all. He's going to be a little less accurate, much less marksmanship bonus, and he's been changed from artillery to arrow. Now, I, I actually don't mind really any of these things too much. But they are stacking on a lot of debuffs to his abilities as well. And I think that's... We're looking at some trouble area here. Um, I do think that... So the change from artillery to arrow, in my opinion, is not bad. Marcus is supposed to be a monster hunter. So the fact that he can be blocked by shields makes him some less of a powerhouse against single entities or... Or, sorry, single entity characters. And, um, like, lords on foot, especially. So I, I don't mind that. Uh, he's supposed to counter monsters, and he'll continue doing so pretty effectively. But now he's losing 45% of his damage on kill shot. Um, and kill shot is now blockable uh, by shields. So that is a pretty significant drop in performance there. Um, Executioner, which I believe is the upgraded version of kill shot you get in campaign, off the top of my head. I, be I believe that should be it. Um, I haven't actually, I haven't actually played Wolfhard in a while. I played him a bit when he dropped, and then I, I've been playing Guild since then. But um, I believe this is Executioner is kill shot upgraded, um, is also taking a significant drop in performance. I'm not sure that's necessary. I don't think campaign skills necessarily deserve nerfs. Um, you could easily make it so it compensates for kill shots debuff, and is just a very potent assassination tool. Well, kill shot stays a bit weaker, and I think that would actually be decent. Um, so kill shot is going to be much less effective. Stack this on top of the fact that Amberbow is now doing. A, I'm not sure what the exact split on the damage output is, but it is doing a significantly or less damage. Probably about thirty percent less would be my guess. Though, like I said, I'm not sure what the damage spread is, uh, how it exactly it's split up. It's also becoming less accurate, um, and. The detonation is getting reduced. I'm not sure how significant that is. I don't think that's too relevant. But really, the main thing is here is that he's getting a massive cut to his damage output. He's losing essentially 45% of his kill shot. He's losing 20%. Or uh, yeah, I'm routing up there, but 18% of his base damage, and he's losing another 30 or let's say 30% on Amber Bow. So Marcus's damage output is dropping like a rock. Now, granted, before he could basically insta-gib a caster hero, so or a hero like a Waystalker or something. So I think it is not a bad move. It will make it so that now if you want to snipe something, you're going to have to use more than one round of abilities on him, which, you know, it's good. But I will say I'm a little worried that an overload of nerfs like this could drop Marcus to being very bad. Um, I don't know if this is going to be the case. Uh, and I don't want to sort of uh, say... Sort of say, oh, he's going to be bad now because he's, his damage is much worse. Because his damage was through the roof insane before. But at the same time, I do worry a little bit that uh, it could be too much. Uh, so those are my thoughts there. Those are the changes made in this beta patch. Uh, very much not a fan of the changes to the, or the buffs to the Dread Saurian's HP uh, or the drop in cost for the Dread Saurian. I'm very much not a fan of the changes to the War Wagons and the Black Lions. I think those are honestly joke tier changes. I think the Black Line is just bad and the War Wagon is mockery because the War Wagons are trash in so many levels. But um, it is what it is. Um, I, I do think the Mortar Fix, I think Marcus, I think uh, Krokgar, Razor Dons, and Nakai having changes like this are all fine. I think that, that's probably steps in the right direction. Um, but all in all, from the balance perspective, a little bit of a disappointing patch. I cannot say I'm thrilled by a lot of the stuff here. Um, granted, there's not much to begin with, but of the things that we have here, uh, there's definitely some things that concern me. Regardless, hopefully you guys um, enjoyed. If you have your own comments, critiques, uh, if you own your own thoughts, honestly, on the situation, feel free to post those. Uh, maybe I'm maybe I'm sort of uh, over overstating uh, the uh, nerfs um, or the ch or understating the uh, understating things. I don't know. Feel free to. Post your comments down below. Um, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye for now.